Hello, makers. I'm not in the studio right now. I'm actually in my local dollar store. And I had this thought, what would I find if I went to the dollar store looking for art supplies? And I have an idea of a project I want to work on, and it's going to require some gel pens. I wanted to see if I could find some fairly inexpensive, by very inexpensive, gel pens to work with. So I think I have a possible solution here. I have stumbled upon these Clip Click brand. Uh, the colored gel pens here are $2.00. Right, two dollars if I want to buy the package, and uh, there's some black ones here as well for one dollar. So I think I can make a three dollar investment in some art supplies and see if we could do something fun with these. I'm also going to look around and see if there's any kind of paper we might work with. All right, now I'm back in the studio. Uh, a successful outing, so I was able to pick up my package of uh, Clip Clicks brand. Uh, gel pens. We got some colored gel pens here. I also picked up some uh, some an eight pack of the ballpoint pens because sometimes black is a good basic color to have for things we're working on. So I'm going to be working with both of these. Uh, so a total of three dollars between these two packages of pens. And I did kind of break down and finally say, you know what, I'm going to get a, have a piece of this oak tag. So this was a dollar. And um, then one side is, is rather glossy, and I don't think that's the side I want. I'm going to turn it over here to the rough side. This will make it easier for me to draw on. That's one of the considerations. And I do have a, a label here, which I think will come off if I put a little bit of patience in there. Oh, absolutely. All right, good. That's not going to get in the way of what I'm doing. So what I'm thinking here is I want to create basically a square area that's going to allow me to create whatever masterpiece I want to put in here. And if all goes well, it'll be in the center of my frame. So I'm going to need to think a little bit about how uh, how far I want to come in from the sides and the top and the bottom and just really create a bit of a margin. I'm going to just do a little bit of planning. Again, before I start making something and then later on find it's not going to work because I didn't put it in the right place, it makes sense to just spend a few minutes figuring out where things should go. Now, when we create any kind of project, especially something we're creating with paper, is to keep in mind that the paper is really part of the art, right? The background that we're using, the textures, the color, whatever it is. And sometimes it's really helpful to have some white space that really helps to frame the artwork. So instead of, you know, I'm gonna sit here and paint up to the margins or draw up to the margins, I'm gonna try to cordon off a bit of a square here. It might be a little bit of a taller rectangle, not sure yet, but let's get a sense of what we can do here. Now, again, this is 18 inches across. And if I say, you know what, it'd be great. If I had, uh, let's say, three inches on each side. So if I come in three inches on each side and just mark that accordingly, there's three, there's three. We'll do the same thing on the bottom edges here. All right, so now I can create three inches top to bottom. Let me just mark that out. And again, I'm going to put some fairly light lines. I want to be able to see them, but I want to be able to erase them later with a, a certain, certain amount of ease. There we go. Looks good. All right, let's just get a vertical line there, and I'm going to do the same thing on this side. And let's just come in here and uh, make sure I can find my bottom mark as well. Good. Okay, so there we are. So we have some consistent margin three inches in from the sides, and that'll give us some white space on the side to help balance things out. Now from top to bottom, what am I thinking about? And again, if I wanted this to be square, then I have a lot more top and, and bottom. What I like to do, this is just my preference, is I like to have a little bit more space on the bottom, white space on the bottom to help frame things as opposed to the top. Let me go to the top here. And uh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to come down, uh, on this case, I'm going to come down four inches. So that'll eat up some of this space. And by the way, that's the beautiful thing about using these clear OmniGrid rulers is I can just lay my top line across the top line of the page and I know exactly how far down four inches is. Look at that. There you go, four inches in, all right? So that's going to be uh, the top. And for the bottom, I think what I'm gonna end up doing is putting in six inches. So we'll see it to be a little little different on the weight at the, uh, at the bottom than it is at the top. But it's, uh, it's gonna come out looking pretty good, all right? Now, what do I want to do here? Well, what I'm thinking about is I'm thinking about using my new gel pens to create basically some scribble art. And that's what I'm calling it. And it just allows me to go in and create an abstract art piece that may have some basic shapes and some basic colorings. And I'll show you how this comes together. It's kind of fun to do, kind of therapeutic. And so we'll think about how we want to do that. But before I go too far, I want to mask off the areas that I'll be using 
so I don't accidentally, if I go over the line with my pen, no harm, no foul, I will mask it off. So in order to do masking on paper, what's my favorite go-to? That's right, it's my good friend, Scotch Magic Tape. Yeah, this stuff is awesome. And it doesn't pull up the paper when it comes off, which is a huge advantage when we're working with things and it allows us to create some, uh, some safety areas. So let me just get some, some of this in here and I'm just gonna bounder it uh, right there. Okay, so there's our top boundary. And let's do the same thing for the bottom. And again, I can just kind of eyeball this, lay it down my line. Good stuff. And let's do the same thing uh, for the verticals. And again, by the way, if it's not exactly, exactly, no one's going to know. No one's visual acuity is going to say, that's off. That's off by, you know, a few specs. You know, try to keep it close, obviously, but uh, yeah, that's going to that's gonna be off a little bit. Let me just drop that in the right place. There we go. And right about there. Okay. There we go. All right. And this is just going to mean when I come in here with my gel pens, if I get past the line, which I don't intend to do, but, you know, I can't always help myself. And uh, so as a result, it will kind of give us a place. And when we peel this up later, nice, clean lines. All right. So what are we going to do here? Well, let's get this package of gel pens on, first of all. So, all right. Here we are. And let's see how our bargain uh, bargain approach to art is going to work out for us with all our materials from the dollar store. And by the way, there's absolutely nothing wrong with most of the stuff we're going to buy at the dollar store. Now, we, we all have attitudes, uh, especially when it comes to paper. I'm a bit of a paper snob because I like heavy paper. I like good textured paper. And a lot of times you go to the dollar store, you're going to get some fairly thin paper. If you want to go out and do sketching in the, in the, in the park, it's just fine. It's just fine. But we all have preferences. Now, will these pens be uh, the best gel pens I've ever used? Uh, you know, for $2, um, probably not. But will they meet my needs? I, I certainly hope so. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here. Actually, what I want to do... Oh, sorry. I wanted the black pen. Uh, and here it is. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to create a couple of basic shapes. So I'm thinking within this space, I'm going to have kind of a black a black thing up here, and maybe something that's a little bit more red here. All right, I'm going to start with those being some basic shapes, and I'll show you what we're doing here. Now, by the way, if I wanted to come in here and do kind of a sketch, first of all, of the kind of shape, I'm thinking it's kind of an, an ovoid, kind of a, an egg-shaped kind of thing, maybe with a little bit of a point as we come in here. So maybe an avocado. How's that look? Okay, so that's one thing, and I'm thinking down here, a little bit smaller, but I want to put in a circle. I think the circle will be red and that will be black. Now, how do we do this? Well, again, I don't want my pencil lines to affect my art. One of the nice things about working with pen is if I come in later and I want to erase test the pencil, it will let me. I can just hit that with an eraser and it will go away. But what I want to be able to do here is I want to come in here and I want to start filling in this space. And I'm going to fill it in basically by scribbling into it. And I'm going to come along the edges here. And by the way, it doesn't matter how precise I am. I want to get approximated. If I cover up my pencil line, so be it. But I'm just going to be creating some, some scribbles. Now, one of the things about working with, uh, with pens and, uh, and, and scribble art is that we're going to get different effects depending upon how we use the pen. So if I'm using all of these, these circular motions, which I am. It's going to give me a different look than if I were like cross-hatching, right? If I were coming in here and doing a lot of cross hatching, over time that's going to change the overall texture and it's going to change the look. And we'll, we'll, get a, we'll get a chance to play around with some of these things. But right now, I'm just going to simply come in here and let's get some scribbling done.
Now, as you can see, the, uh, the shape is getting darker and darker the more I go over it, which is to be expected. And again, there's no right answer on how we do this. What I want to do is create a shape that's fairly dark here because I'm going to be putting other colors on top of it eventually anyway, and I want this to be able to show through. That's uh, the master plan here. And I'm just going to come in here and, and fill in as much of the white space as I feel comfortable with to get the shape and the, and the depths I'm looking for. By the way, sometimes when you're doing this kind of thing, this is a, a perfect time to put on your favorite podcast or an audio book or something, your music, and, uh, and just have something to listen to. There's a certain amount of zen that goes into just, you know, scribbling on a piece of paper. Really, I supply, I, I'm very surprised still when I'm working on projects to find out how much it really relaxes me. Because it's, you know, it's, there's a certain level of just letting your mind go when you're working on these things. Especially if you're not spending a lot of time worrying about, like, somehow I'm going to do this wrong. There's, there's no right answer here. There's no right answer. Do what makes you feel good. And the worst thing that can happen is you create something you don't like. And you go, okay, I learned something. Next time, I'll do it a little bit differently and maybe I'll like it more. That's really what we're doing here. So just get in there and do something. Make something happen. So let's get that. I'm going to add a little bit more. And again, you, you can see kind of uh, I'm getting some modeling. I'm getting some kind of different areas of color, which is kind of what I want to be able to do here. I don't want it to be all uniform. And this is going to be kind of interesting. And again, I can focus on specific areas, like I can come in here and let's make sure we do something in here. And you can see it starts becoming much darker. Okay. So depending on what our needs are, and let's just come in here and again, let's get this, this whole area. Get up to the edges here as well. All right. Not unhappy with that. And again, if I want to come back and drop some more dark on here, I can. But I think, uh, I think I've been able to do what I wanted to do with that piece. Now, with the smaller circle down here, I'm going to use red. And so same process. I'm going to come in here and uh, let's get some scribbling on the red. Okay, the red is coming along pretty well. And again, there's no there's no precision required here because the next step is going to kind of, well, <laughs> it's going to kind of negate what we've been working on here. What I'm really looking to accomplish here is I want to create some shapes that we'll be able to see, but I'm going to obscure them next. I'm actually going to take some of these other colors and I'm going to cover everything else, including the black, including the red, with these additional colors because I really want these to be kind of tucked into the background by the time this project is done. So I think I've got that as red as I want it to be. And now it's just a matter of deciding how to approach it from this point on. We still have quite a few great colors in here. So there's uh, the blues are going to come in handy, this purple as well, maybe even the orange. I don't know. Maybe we'll do a combination of all sorts of things. But what I want to do is I want to start hitting the rest of these areas with kind of a, an overlap of, of these different colors. Let me go with the uh, the the orange yellow first because it is really the lightest and will probably blend in with everything else. So I'm going to come in here and uh, again, this is why we put the tape down because now I can get next to my tape line and not worry too much about going out of bounds. I'm going to just come in here again. Let's get a layer of, of this yellow orange down. I'm going to keep this kind of loose. I'm not going to make it as tight as some of the other things. As you can see, I'm just kind of just filling in as much of the white as I can. And then when I'm done, we'll talk about the next color. All right, so just about there. Now again, I don't want to go too deep, but you can start to see because again, the color, but also the motion of the pen, it, it completes the effect. It's a little bit different. Again, I realize it's rather hard to see on camera, but I don't want to go too tight in with this. Um, oh, let me get down here. I don't want to go too deep with this orange color simply because I really just want this to be part of what we're doing. So I'll lay that down. Now let's come in here and, uh, gosh, what kind of colors do we have? You know what? 
I'm going to stay also like this. Green is fairly light, but if I start adding this to the orange, we're going to get an interesting relationship between that as well as the two objects we already have. So let's come in here with the green and let's uh, start getting some, some circles on our orange circles. There we go. And uh, let's see where this takes us. All right, just finishing up on the green here. And again, we start to get very different types of colors with the overlays, in this case, the orange and the green. I'm going to go, I think, um, I'm going to go with the light blue next. And with the light blue, over time, of course, we want to start kind of making this a little bit heavier. But I want these other colors to be able to peek through it. I want to just come in here and lay, lay down a color like blue on top, which we're going to do eventually. But I want to make sure these other colors are, are participating in part of this. So let's, uh, let's get this light blue in here first. And uh, see how that looks. So that shows up nicely. Okay, our light blue, doing a nice job. It's again, blending well with the orange and the green colors to create its own kind of, its own kind of pedigree, its own thing here. And uh, not unhappy with how that's turning out at all. All right, so we're getting some pretty good, th and by the way, you can't see it perhaps well, but when you look inside the black, any of the areas that had white are now seeing colors of blue and hints of orange and green coming through. And that really changes it up pretty dramatically as well. All right. So, and we can come back. Uh, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use all the colors. I'm going to use all the colors and we'll see what we get. I'm going to drop some purple in here as well. We'll get a blend. I'm going to finish everything up with a darker blue, which should close up a lot of the white space by the time we're done. But let's get some purple in here as well. And again, the goal here is to kind of get a melange of colors. By the way, I get an extra point for using the word melange in a sentence. But uh, getting all this mix of colors that will uh, just really work well together. So let's get some purple in here and see where this takes us. Okay, we're coming to the end of the purple here. And uh, not gonna lie, not gonna lie, doing this all uh, all within a short period of time, it's not a bad arm workout. Yeah, you, you might feel the burn a little bit here, making lots and lots of circles. Probably not something that's good for carpal tunnel syndrome, so please don't hurt yourself, but uh, you, can, you can take it slow. There's nothing wrong with going at your own pace. I'm just trying to get this done as, as quickly as I can. But there we go, I've got some, uh, some purple in there, and again, as we zoom in here, you can see just kind of the mixture of these colors by itself is really, really pretty cool. All right, so some cool things in there. All right, you know what? Magenta, because we have it. We might as well use it. Let's get some magenta, and then we'll seal everything off with our darker blue, and we'll see where that takes us. So getting some magenta. I think it's going to work. I think this is going to work. One of the things that's really very interesting about working with any media is that while you're working on any projects, you're always learning new things. One of the things I'm really finding very intriguing here is within this black shape, if you look at it, there are a lot of colors hidden there. Let me zoom in on that so you guys can see. I mean, all the different colors we're laying down are now showing up here. It's almost like an Easter egg of sorts in the background. It makes me think that if I started here and just put in black, and then put all the colors on top of it, or maybe put all the colors of the black on top of it, I get this really, really interesting effect. And it might be, you know, again, I filed these things away for a, another day thinking, all right, if I want to come back and do some scribble art, 
what are some things that I might want to try to see what's going to happen here? Because, uh, you know, this is not a high, highly dedicated art type uh, in my experience. I've been playing around with it a little bit um, because it was more of a, hey, what if kind of scenario, which is often how my artist brain works. But uh, to be able to come in here and get a sense of, wow, that's kind of cool. And that works out pretty nicely. All right. So um, I'm good with the uh, the magenta there. I think it just added a little bit more of, of kind of the purple colors that we had before. But now I'm going to come in here and I'm going to start with the darker blue. And so what my expectations are is this blue pen is going to end up kind of obscuring a lot more of the other colors and hiding them in the background. Now, again, there's nothing wrong with the way it is now, if that's what I want. But I want it to be a little bit more uh, uniform. So I'm going to come in here and, again, I'm going to start laying down some of the dark blue. And as I've expected, it's going to start to cover up some of the other colors. I'm going to be a little bit more thorough with this color than I have with the other colors, too, because I do want the blue to end up being more of an obscuring color. I do want the other colors to shine through. I want them to be able to uh, obviously be present, but I want the blue to, uh, to dominate here. So I'm going to take my time and uh, let's get some blue in here and see what happens next. All right, I've been able to get a, a good cover of the blue in here now. Um, it's still not obscuring the way I want it to. So I'm going to probably go over and at least put as much blue down as I've already put down to get something a little bit. You notice down here in this corner here, I don't know if you can see it very well, but I've gone with a little bit of a darker. And this is kind of what I'd like to be able to provide throughout this entire piece. So again, it's, it's, uh, it's time for some more blue in here. And uh, let's get scribbling. One of the things that I'm noticing as I get a little bit darker is that these areas start to look almost like stained glass windows where these colors are popping through, in essence, the framework in this blue here. And I really like how, I really like that effect. It's really, really cool from just a texturing standpoint with just that bit. And of course, with the, with the black in the background and this red in the background as well, um, it's, uh, they're, they're being obscured nicely. Now, I am looking at this, I'm thinking, all right, but is it as dark as I want it to be? Now, there's nothing wrong with the way this is, perhaps. So you might say, hey, you know what? That'd be perfect. But I think I want to go in a little bit darker. I'm going to go back to my black pen, and I'm not going to overdo it. And again, a lot of times, you know, this is more of a lab than it is a studio sometimes. A lot of times the question we're trying to answer is, what happens if I do this? And so I'm going to come in here and just kind of give it a, a general sense of if I put some, some black in here, will it add a different kind of texture to what's already in here. Certainly at this point in time, I don't want to come and ruin the pro probably miles, right? Miles of scribbling that I've already done. But I do want to bring a little bit more of a darker element into play. And I think this black will work. I think it's already working without obscuring any of the good stuff we've already put down. Again, I'm making some fairly wide arcs here. Um, because I do want the black to be distributed. I don't want it to all end up focusing on one point because that is just not the look I'm going for. But I do want something that is more obscuring. And of the colors we've worked with here, you know, we have a we have a great collection going, but none of them is really an obscuring color as such. Depends on how we use them, I suppose. But uh, a little bit more black in here, I think, is is not hurting it. It's not hurting it. And, you know, I may also come back in with my blue and say, you know what, let's just go in a little bit tighter with the blue. Let's see what happens we do this. It's getting kind of an overall purple hue, it turns out, with our reds and uh, 
and the blues blending together. But I'm gonna I'm gonna just give it a little bit more uh, of the blue here, and let's see what happens as we uh, make this a little bit darker. All right. Now, at some point in any piece that you're working on, your brain is going to start to think, am I done yet? And I'm looking at this thinking, all right, am I done yet? Now, I want to be able to take the tape off and see the cleanliness of the lines that will help it to, to, to kind of say, ah, that's it where we want. Do I have the look and feel I want? And again, I may or may not at this point. I still think I want a little bit more of the dark in here. Um, the blue is great, but I really wanted the blue as an obscuring color and not necessarily as the, the main hue of this piece. And if I can knock it back a little bit with the black, that might be nice too. Again, there is no right answer, but I do wanna make sure that I have something that I'm gonna be pretty happy with in the long run. I think this black is actually um, taking care of kind of the missing piece, at least in my mind. It's allowing me, it's allowing me to just get a sense of how dark I want this. Now I can also kind of, you know, if there are any parts within here that I think there's a white spot I can kind of get rid of, maybe I can do one of these. But one of the things I want to be very careful I don't do is overwork it. And I find that there's a point in every piece of art where you're pretty close to the edge. And sometimes you say, let's just do some more and you end up going past that point. You end up saying, oh, it would have been nice if I had stopped five minutes ago, right? And uh, you don't want to have those regrets. So it's easier always to add to something if you, uh, if you want to work on it a little bit in the future. Now, oftentimes what I'll do with a piece like this is I'll get it to a point where I think I'm happy with it and I'll stick it up on my wall. And I will look at it over time and I will, my brain will automatically say, you know what? It'd be nice if that area was a little bit darker over there. And I can then say, okay, let me grab a pen let me jump in there and uh, let me make things a little bit darker. But I'm, I'm feeling pretty happy with, uh, with where this piece is. Again, this is more of a proof of concept than anything else. But let's, uh, I don't know, at some point, let's, let's commit. And I'll get a little bit more black in here, but I think, uh, I think we are on the edge of where we might overwork it. All right, I am gonna say that is what I wanted to do and I did it on purpose. Let's come in here now and let's get this masking off and we'll get a deeper sense of how this whole thing is coming together. And again, I'm gonna be very careful removing my tape. The Magic Tape does a really good job of not ripping the paper, but it is not a 100% solution. There are times when if you're not careful with it, it'll pick up a little, little bit of the paper and take it with it and yeah, you don't want that to happen. But notice where that line is the line is really clean, so I'm happy with how this turned out. Let's do the same thing over on this side. And we'll get that edge. Oops, I got part of it. Let's try at the top then. There we go. And this will come down and again. Nice boundaries. Nice boundaries where the masking was. Happy about that. All right, let's get some of the bottom tape off. Here. A little of the challenges when you're working with nearly transparent tape is it's nearly transparent. So sometimes finding the edge can make it a little bit more challenging. There we go. All right, not unhappy with that at all. And I'm just going to turn this piece around so I have better access here. But let's grab this piece at the top. And bring that across. So we're starting to really see what this is going to look like revealed. And one of the things I also want to do is I'm going to uh, come in here. I'm going to grab my uh, my Prismacolor Magic Rub Eraser, and I'm going to get rid of my pencil lines here. Let's come in and do this. By the way, the pencil lines that I had around the objects here, you can't even see them, so not going to be a problem for us. So let's come along here and let's get the pencil lines to come up. And by the way, I'm gonna be very careful around the ink. Um, well, I don't expect the ink to erase. The ink is still relatively fresh. 
and may not have totally dried. And the last thing I want to do is start smearing it around. That's that's not the effect I'm looking for. Okay, so let's do this. All right, again, let's get some get some eraser crumbs out of here. If you have any other imperfections, any things that are making you unhappy, now's a good time to start working on that. All right, beautiful, beautiful. All right, so there we are. I mean, again, what we have here is in the eye of the beholder, more of a proof of concept. I'm not unhappy with it. I appreciate the time you spent with us today. I realize you have a lot of other things you can do with your time, and so I absolutely appreciate you spending the time learning how to make some art. And uh, if you want to do this on a regular basis, hey, hit that subscribe button and uh, hit the bell notification. We'll let you know every time we drop a new video, which is once a week, and we'll tell you about all the cool things that we're doing, right? Anyway, thanks so much for joining us today. Really appreciate it. And I'll see you next time.